Hi everybody, so my name is Sadia. I'm a business psychologist for Two Health and welcome to this series of free webinars run by Two Health, which is an occupational health services provider and we provide um, uh, specialised solutions uh, such as today's webinar, uh, awareness sessions, workplace needs assessments, as well as other solutions that can be tailored to individual needs. So today's webinar, a uh, very short webinar, aims to provide a quick whistle stop tour and a brief overview of the richness of neurodiversity. So as we come together to share in the spirit of the holidays, we can also embrace the unique perspectives and talents that neurodivergent individuals can bring to our lives. So this webinar is a platform for understanding, um, acceptance and unity, and hopefully I can give you some practical strategies on how to create a holiday environment that does welcome everyone. So I do want to just emphasize that, um, excuse me, that these webinars are intended as introductory sessions only. They aim a taste or a high level overview of the topic at hand. So again, it is important to note that these webinars are offered free of charge. They are not intended to provide a comprehensive and exhaustive explanation of the subject matter. So if you are seeking more comprehensive and in-depth sessions, we do encourage you to get in touch. OK, so let's get started. I just want to start by defining what neurodiversity is. Now, um, it is an umbrella term which aims to capture a number of learning and developmental difficulties. And it's defined as the concept that neurological differences such as autism, ADHD, dyslexia and others are the result of normal, natural variation in the human genome. Now, some of the common terminology you may hear includes neurodiverse, neurodivergent. Sorry, I don't know what's happening with my slides today. Um, SPLD, so specific learning differences, SEND, special educational needs and disabilities. That's the term that tend, these are the terms that tend to be used in education. We also have neurodifference, neurodevelopmental. You may hear the word neurotypical, and that refers to somebody who is not neurodivergent. So, the idea of neurodiversity is to embrace difference, but also recognise that some people who are neurodivergent will require extra support. And we're trying to move away from this medical model of abnormality or something that needs curing. It's important to understand that these conditions, which I'll look into a little bit more detail, are lifelong conditions. They cannot be cured, um, looking to cure them, but they can be successfully managed. It is estimated that up to one in seven people are neurodivergent. So some of the common conditions that come under neurodiversity includes dyslexia, um, dyscalculia, dyspraxia, also called developmental coordination disorder. We have ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. We have autism or autism spectrum condition, or it's also called autism spectrum disorder. And some of these conditions um, are often referred to as a hidden disability, and that's because they're not as obvious as a physical disability. It's important to understand that all of these conditions, they are neuro neurological or brain-based in origin, 
And that means that people that are neurodivergent will process information differently. <clears throat> Excuse me. So people who are neurodiverse, they can be found across the spectrum of intellectual ability. Um, also, the impact of their conditions can vary on their day to day life, and it does also vary from person to person as well. And also, there can be a co occurrence of these conditions, and that means that they can occur with each other. So, one or more of these conditions, for example, um, can exist in a person. OK, so I just want to start by looking at autism. I'm really sorry. Every time I press a button, it just wants to run away with me, these slides. So I don't know what's happened there, but sorry about that. OK, so in terms of um, autism, well, that's a again a neurological condition characterized by difficulties in social interaction. Um, and communication, as well as restricted and repetitive patterns of behaviour, interests or activities. And people that are autistic can experience um, sensory overload, so they can be overly sensitive or under sensitive as well to things like noise, touch, smell, certain textures. And Again, a spectrum condition, meaning that it manifests in a wide range of challenges and severity levels as well. So dyslexia is a so individuals that are dyslexic, they may struggle with reading, writing and spellings, um, as well as processing information and organisation and time management as well. Some of the challenges associated with dyspraxia or developmental coordination disorder um, can include things like coordination of fine or gross uh, motor coordination and that includes things like coordination of your smaller muscle groups or your larger muscle groups so that can make it hard for somebody to for example hold cutlery um, do up buttons tie up shoelaces even just navigating their work environment or their physical environment it can also, so those are the common uh, challenges that are associated with dyspraxia, but it can also impact a person's planning and organisational skills as well. So in terms of our next condition, which is dyscalculia, so that can include challenges with um, concepts, understanding and manipulating numbers. It can also difficulties with timekeeping and understanding money and quantity. And if we just take a look at briefly what ADHD is. Um, OK, so that includes challenges with uh, attention, so sustaining uh, someone's attention, it can be difficult with ADHD. There can also be difficulties with impulsivity as well as difficulties with focus and concentration. Now, it's not just about the challenges faced by neurodivergent individuals. Often, that is the easy thing to do. It is easy to focus on the areas of difficulty, but it is important to understand that neurodivergent individuals do have many strengths like the ones shown here, and they are by no means exhaustive. So um, if I give you a few examples, well, neurodivergent individuals have been um, known to be very determined and empathetic individuals. If you think about the, the challenges that they face on a day to day basis, that does make them more likely to be more resilient and persevere. They can be creative, 
They can be good visual thinkers. They can be very good problem solvers. Um, they can uh, be very good at uh, taking in auditory information as well. So uh, again, if we do embrace neurodiversity, recognize the strengths that people can bring to the table, and of course that can benefit everyone. Okay, so I just want to, again, this is just running away with me. Um, so, oh, so sorry about this. I just wanted, mm, okay, so if I just explain some of the common stresses that in neurodivergent ind individuals face. Now, challenges, uh, so one of the things that they can find difficult is communication. Often they face challenges in interpreting non-verbal cues. Okay, I'll, I'll just leave them there and I'll go through them then one at a time. So they can have uh, challenges in interpreting nonverbal cues, understanding uh, subtle social cues and expressing themselves in a neurotypical environment. And that's the kind of thing that can lead to stress. Now they can also experience sensory sensitivities. Uh, so they can be overly sensitive or undersensitive to sensory stimuli such as bright lights and loud noises. Neurodiver neurodivergent individuals may find it stressful when their routines are disrupted and they do often thrive on pre predictability and structured environments. Difficulties in quickly switching between tasks or managing multiple tasks simultaneously, that can be a significant stressor. Also, uh, social interactions, so navigating social interactions, understanding unspoken social rules and building effective interpersonal relationships can also be challenging. Now, there can be uh, an expectation to, com to conform to certain norms and behaviours, and that may not align with the neurodivergent way of, pr promote, of processing information. Sometimes lack of clarity, uh, what is required, uh, that can be misunderstood as well. And sometimes uh, transitions between tasks, that can be difficult to understand as well. Um, and also sometimes the fear of not meeting somebody's expectations can be heightened as well. And then that can lead to stress and can impact a person's well-being. So understanding and addressing these stresses is crucial for creating an inclusive environment for neurodivergent individuals. So let's look at what you can do this holiday season. Oh. Okay, so I think so. Let's try to accommodate the diverse needs of neurodivergent individuals. So what can you do? Well, think about your decorations and lighting. Try to opt for soft, non-flashing lights um, and consider minimising any bright lights or overwhelming decorations. Maybe you could uh, use adjustable lighting fixtures to control the brightness in different areas. Think about uh, sound as well. So try to control background noise by using noise cancelling headphones or maybe providing quiet zones. Also, maybe think about using soothing background music, allowing people to adjust the volume levels. Another thing you can do is maybe try to use visual cues to uh, indicate changes in the schedule so or any upcoming events to accommodate those who may struggle with auditory processing. Another thing you can maybe try to do is provide fidget toys or textured objects for those who do benefit from tactile stimulation. 
maybe consider the comfort of seating arrangements and offer alternative seating options as well. You could also, where possible, try to provide options for temperature control, such as fans or blankets, and that can accommodate those that do have any temperature sensitivities. Also, think about your food and drink options. Try to be mindful of food textures and flavours to accommodate various sensory preferences. You could try setting up food stations where attendees can customise their meals based on per personal preferences. It might also help to clearly label foods with potential allergens or strong flavours as well. So hopefully some of these practical strategies uh, will help you to create an inclusive environment that respects and accommodates the diverse needs and preferences of neurodiverse individuals during holiday celebrations. And I am sorry that they've appeared all at once. Um, I know that's not very um, helpful. And the same is going to happen again now. I'm going to try and stop that. OK. Uh, about this webinar is that we're going to try to um, foster open dialogue and try to create a holiday environment that welcomes neurodivergent individuals. And all of that does require a thoughtful and inclusive approach. And these, um, so hopefully there's some more practical tips here that you can use to try to do that. Now, um, so think about uh, education and awareness. Try to share information about neurodiversity and the importance of inclusivity in holiday celebrations in advance where possible. Another thing you can try to do is to provide easily accessible resources, maybe brochures, websites or videos that explain neurodivergent conditions. Uh, and you are free to use some of the information that we have on our YouTube channel. Now, try to ensure that uh, the event communication is clear concise and inclusive of different communication styles and you can utilize various communication channels such as email social media visual announcements and that can be to try to reach a diverse audience now so to get conversations going, you could organise small group discussions with trained facilitators to encourage open discussions or conversations. Maybe allow attendees to submit questions anonymously to try to address their concerns or queries without judgment. Thing you can do is try to collect feedback as well. So post events and this you can use afterwards for, for the next celebration or the get together. Maybe provide a mechanism for attendees to be able to share their feedback anonymously, allowing continuous improvement. Also, if you can um, host any post event discussions to reflect on what worked well and areas for improvement in fostering inclusivity, then that can be helpful as well. So by incorporating uh, some of these practical tips, you can actively foster open dialogue and create a holiday environment that does truly welcome everyone, including neurodivergent individuals. OK, so what else can you do? Well, you can try to um, create a warm and welcoming uh, atmosphere for all attendees, emphasising the value of diversity. 
also think about your venue. So maybe uh, designate quiet spaces within the venue for individuals who may need a break from sensory stimuli. Also ensure that the venue is physically accessible with ramps and elevators for those with mobility challenges. So you could think about your activities as well. So offer a variety of activities that cater to different interests and preferences. Maybe consider games and activities that can be adapted to accommodate the various abilities and skill levels. So um, partner with local uh, neurodiversity organisations for support guidance um, and potential collaboration. Maybe even um, uh, showcase art or performances by neurodivergent individuals to celebrate their talents and contributions. And there are lots of neurodivergent celebrities out there. You could also think about setting up uh, information booths with interactive displays that educate attendees about neurodiversity. Try to maybe use visuals like infographics or interactive displays to convey information in a visually engaging way. So by incorporating these practical tips, you can create a holiday environment that truly welcomes everyone, including neurodivergent individuals. Now, uh, here at Two Health, uh, we do offer coaching, co-coaching, um, screening and diagnostics here, as well as assistive technology training, awareness sessions, and we can tailor training packages as well. So, all of these things are offered here at Two Health, and if you do need uh, support with that, then do please get in touch. Now, change is on the horizon, and uh, more and more uh, people do, uh, you know, they do understand inclusivity, and they do. Organisations do promote diversity as well. And over the past decade, there has been a significant increase in the celebration of neurodiversity. You have influential figures and celebrities speaking out about neurodiversity and highlighting its importance. So, you know, the way we live and work is changing. Um, it is important that we that our preconceived ideas and stigma and stereotypes are challenged. Um, and it's important to understand that, um, you know, people are multifaceted and they do not need to be defined by their thinking difference. So to wrap up, here is a quick summary of what has been discussed today. So we've looked at some of the divergent conditions. We've looked at some of the, the stresses that can be faced by neurodivergent individuals. And so I've given you some practical tips to make uh, today uh, this holiday season to be as inclusive as possible. And, you know, it is important that we do try to create an environment that does include everyone. So in embracing these strategies um, or trying to learn about neurodiversity, we cultivate an atmosphere that celebrates the richness of neurodiversity. And by fostering open dialogue and prioritising the diverse needs of all individuals, we contribute to a festive season that truly reflects the spirit of unity and acceptance. So let's make this season one of compassion, where the magic of the holidays shines bright for every individual. So thank you very much for joining today's webinar and the willingness to create a more inclusive world that values each person for who they are. I do apologise for the slides. I don't know what happened there. Um, I know that's not very neurodiverse friendly. So again, ever so sorry about that. 
So hopefully today's very brief webinar has given you a better idea of some of the struggles faced by those with neurodivergent individuals and what you can do to support them. So hopefully um, you will go away with some practical tips that you can try to incorporate. We do value your feedback. Um, so please do leave a review on our trust pilot page um, and if you would like to get in touch then you can do that via our uh, website email telephone or our social media platforms so again thank you very much for joining me this morning <laughs>